Welcome to this how-to stats video on levels of measurement, nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now I think it's probably fair to say that the topic of levels of measurement is pretty boring to most people, but if you scratch underneath the surface even just a little bit, it actually stays pretty boring. But it's actually very important to understand levels of measurement if you ever want to apply statistics or if you ever want to do well on an exam in statistics. And for that reason, a thorough understanding of levels of measurement is one of the factors that most separates common people from stats nerds. And so I think we should get started with learning this concept. So the aims of the talk in this video are to describe the nature of the four levels of measurement, to describe why they are important, to provide examples of the scales, and examples of statistics on data measured on the four scales. So levels of measurement. Anything that can be measured can be categorized into a level of measurement. And there are four levels. Nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. Now why is this important? Much of this discussion on level of measurement might seem academic, but it actually has very practical implications. And the most important one is that if you understand levels of measurement, then you will be able to determine what statistic to perform. And this is the one thing that computers can't do well. So computers can actually perform the statistical analysis very quickly and very accurately, but computers can't tell us what statistical analysis we should do well. Uh, does not tell us what, uh, what statistic we should perform on a particular data set. And I have to say, once computers actually know how to do something like that, stats nerds around the world will be walking around the world with a lot less swagger. It's Stanley Stevens that you have to blame for having to learn levels of measurement because he introduced it first. And as I mentioned, there are four levels of measurement and it was Stevens who suggested nominal, ordinal, interval, and ratio. This was actually controversial at the time. And I mean controversial in the uh, context of statistics. Really, it was a storm in a teacup. Uh, but it's worth pointing out that although it was controversial, uh, after several years, it, was, it became widely accepted, the four levels of measurement proposed by Stevens. Now let's look at the first one, nominal. What you should try to remember first is that nominal actually sounds like the word names, and that's not a coincidence. It's also categorical. That should be the word that comes to mind next, categorical. Because nominal, a nominal level of measurement consists of a set of categories that have different verbal labels or names. It's also qualitative in nature. There's a qualitative distinction between the categories that are used uh, to sp uh, that are specified in a nominal measured variable. And another word is identified. We simply identify the various categories within that variable. There is no quantitative distinction made within a nominal scale. So let's look at some examples. Biological sex is a commonly uh, used variable and it's measured on a nominal scale because we basically have male and female. I realize it can get be more complicated than that, but in most, uh, most cases, biological sex is measured uh, on a nominal scale, male and female. It's simply categorical. There is no quantitative distinction between male and female. Do you eat spam is a question that could be asked and answered on a nominal scale. Yes or no. Now another term that you will see in uh, statistics and level of measurement discussions is the word dichotomous. And these two examples of nominal scales are also, uh, may also be described as dichotomous in nature because they only have two categories. Nominal scales that only have two uh, categories are also known as dichotomous. Now country of residence 
is a nominal scale that could and usually does have more than 